Okay, I've been asked to do a little update, Irma 2 today. And this is actually a very good place to start because uh, before Hurricane Irma, we were at, before these docks were here, we were on a mooring ball, like right, I don't know, 20 yards that way. And the mooring ball was a real heavy duty thing. It was down to a ship's chain, which they had laid here to keep the boat safe. And um, in Irma, it wasn't the mooring that failed. The, the one inch mooring lines literally pulled through the front beams, which are very heavily built glass fiber structures. And in round one, which was the wind coming from behind me, she broke free of her mooring. Who knows the sequence of events, but she ended up upside down where the mast racks are, just a uh, hundred yards down there, with the mast broken in four places, still in the water. And then in round two, and we only know this because um, there were some pictures taken during the eye, but in round two, she departed the mast rack area and was blown in the, in the um, southerly wheat breezes to where there's a, a white pickup truck on the bridge there. Well, in fact, where that electrical post is there, just a few feet away. And she was literally blown out of the water and landed half on the bridge, sort of dangling over the water upside down. That was the end of her Irma. And uh, we then had a plan to try and relaunch her um, because one sponson was broken, that's a float. So one was sort of broken at the front beam. And the other one was still kind of attached, although it was severed where the mooring line had gone through. And we were hoping that we could just flip her over, put her back in the water and just deal with her another day because obviously homes had gone and businesses had gone and it was a pretty busy time but it while we were trying to write her with the nanny key machine that they got like a big jcb with an extending arm the other sponson float came off so now all that's left is a main hull um, one sponson completely gone and then the other sponson just cracked off at 90 degrees at where the forward beam was so pretty nasty we couldn't write her she was just moved upside down out of the way that was the main thing she was in the way so she was moved out of the way and for the first year after Irma she just sat over there upside down while we reattached the sponson that had come off and repaired the one that was broken and and then sorry we didn't reattach the sponson I'm wrong we repaired the broken sponson but we still had the sponson that had fallen off ready to refit but that happened when she was craned from there over to our work site over there, Tent City. And there she stayed for four and a half years while we glued the sponson back on, flipped her up the right way, and then got into all the other um, bits and bobs like the coach roof here was completely shattered. Um, there was no end of deck to reinforce. The rudder had gone in Hurricane Irma, so we had to make a new rudder. The daggerboard casing was upset. Um, anything and everything, a, a long four and a half years until the, including a repaint and everything, cosmetics, you name it, until the launch, which happened um, just a week ago. And uh, we were trundled by the same crane that took us over there to the water's edge and plopped in the water. And now here we are getting ready for the BBI Spring Regatta, which is in a, the first race is a week yesterday. So that's a round Tortola race. After that, you've got the Regatta proper. Um, that's what we are getting ready for, finishing all the details like fixing winches down. Shouldn't do that, should be in place. So there's 10 winches to bolt down, there's sheets to lay, there's a main sheet system. This is just mocked up. There's a backstay system. All the rigging is new and it's all fiber rigging now, not stainless steel. That's all got to be stretched into place with a test sail. Um, sails themselves have got to go up. This is crispier than it should be. It's a, it's a as, it's only done three regattas, but it's six years old and being carbon, it hasn't enjoyed storage in the tropics. So we might lose this sail and have to use a Dacron sail to get through the regatta. But, yeah, the devil is in the detail. Um, the final stretch is, is tough. Um, you know, just to fit one winch, it takes you 
half a day because you have to have like three or four trips to the Chandra. That's just how it is. Oh, we also added an engine down there. That's um, being put together right now. That's because we're getting old and um, we always sailed everywhere, sailed onto moorings, sailed off moorings. We had a little outboard but didn't really use it. And that meant that whenever you went sailing, you had to have two or three guys who really knew what they were doing. And um, that meant that she didn't get used that much. But now with an engine, literally come up here and turn on the key, which is not there, um, and start the engine and motor out just with your you know, wife and kids. Um, it's, um, it's gonna be so much more user-friendly. And also gives you the ability to enter certain races that you couldn't before, like Carry 600? Mm, oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I think the Caribbean 600, you do need an inboard engine, yeah. And so, yes, we, the next year's Caribbean 600 is, it would, on our wish list for sure. And yes, having an inboard engine is key for that, yeah. Mast and boom are carbon. And um, we bought the mast uh, oh, about a year after, um, two years after Emma, maybe. And that came off a 40 foot race boat. Uh, monohull and so we've had to modify it with the the diamonds and everything really to make it um, a multi-hull mast because uh, you know we don't have shrouds and the same spreader arrangement that a monohull does so yeah modified all that and we also managed to get that the boom that was with that mast because that was no longer being used either and so that's been modified to to work for us so yeah and uh, the exciting thing when we launched was that um, we got weighed. Um, we were four and a quarter metric tons um, when we weighed in in 2016 when we were doing our CSA ratings. And we are now all up 4,298 kilos, something like that. Um, so we've, we've put on some and we knew because obviously there's an engine there and a, a lot of repairs. Um, heavy winches. I just showed Alistair this winch. That is a, whoa, a 54, 32 kilograms. Incredible. So, um, but they're very good winches. So yeah, we've, um, with a multi-hole, you're always thinking add less weight, but um, we have also decided to go for things that are gonna last the duration, you know, th this boat is basically a 2023 build now. I mean, there's there's nothing on this boat that's going to wear out in terms of rudder, daggerboard, the furler is new, the boom is basically new, the mast is new, the engine systems are, are new, the instruments are, are new, the paint is new. Uh, there's, it's like a, a 2003 build. And it feels like about the same hours to build a boat as it's taken to repair it. So, do a little boat tour um, from the back to the front. Uh, th these are where, this is where the backstays are made off and backstays take a, a lot of strain uh, because they, um, they give you four stay tension so you can point close to the wind. We, uh, we removed, it had used, used to have stainless steel, just little hoops here and we removed them and we've made our own um, fiberglass they're not carbon, they're just biaxial cloth and um, epoxy, but they are chain plates with a polished um, half inch bolt going through there. And uh, there will be a lashing. It will look a bit neater than this when it's done. But the backstay itself is um, this Dyneema, I think it's 14 millimeter Dyneema. Um, stupidly strong. I mean, you know, one, one strand of this could lift the boat. Um, and uh, that is gonna be controlled by a winch going up that way. And there are in fact two backstays. There's this one here. And that one little stay there is about the only thing that survived off the old mast that we could reuse. But there it is, that's original. Um, the tiller is original. Uh, well, we built it, we've owned the boat for 30 years, Steve and myself. And um, we built this in Exmouth all of 30 years ago and um, that survived. This is all new, this is all carbon fiber. 
The rudder has been moved forwards a foot. That was quite a task. And um, we, we built the rudder from a donor rudder from one of our competitors actually called um, a catamaran called Soma. Thank you, Niels. And moving forwards. So amazingly, when she was thrown upside down on that concrete bridge, this survived, which was built by Jeff Cook up in Virgin Gorda. And the seats, the two seats survived, our comfortable helmsman seats, um, which originally came from a tennis court in um, Puerto Rico in the Canary Islands. Um, coming out to the main chain plates, let's move this out of the way. So again, you can see Dyneema rigging this. The shrouds themselves are special Dyneema. This is like a heat treated, it's that, it's that width there you can see, but then the splice, you can see how it starts getting fatter and then that round to here. So you have all this lashing arrangement around the chain plate that we built and that enables you to get a lot of tension as much as we dare really into the rigging. And it's the same sort of story for the, uh, the lower triangle. These are the, um, the lower shrouds here. And so, and there is a bulkhead in here as well. So when we built this, these layers of unidirectional um, glass go all the way down either side of the bulkhead there. So that is incredibly strong. Um, another thing that survived Irma, unbelievably, are the trampolines, or I won't say trampolines because that encourages children to jump in them, but they are the nets. And uh, a local canvas man, uh, Manasseh Phillip, made these for us 28 years ago and they're still good had a few repairs but they're still good and then moving up we were talking about the mast thing of beauty it was a black carbon mast um, along with the boom but we primed and painted it um, having had ample paints on hand through our sponsor alexiel who who donated us um, ten thousand dollars worth of paint so Everywhere has been painted, everything's been painted. Below, above decks, um, the hulls, the mast, the boom, nothing's escaped being painted. So yes, we, our work here was we uh, made the spreaders or modified them from some other spreaders that we had. And uh, we then worked out the geometry that they had to be at to induce a bit of bend into the mast because you need a bit of pre-bend in the mast. That's what our main cell's designed for. That's what she likes. Um, the mast track here, this is an Antel mast track. Um, Bob Phillips from Doyle Sales um, donated us new track all the way down to a join about there. Um, then we got this from another salvage mast that we found in Virgin Gorda. And the Antel system is fantastic. It's just got these fiber sliders here and there's no ball bearings. Uh, we got plenty of spares and it's going to enable us to easily um, get mainsails on and off. Great system. And then moving forwards, you can't really see, but this, this sponsor or this float was completely off the boat, the starboard side. So we had to reattach that. I mean, that's all work that's gone on and you can't really see any evidence of it. And uh, on the port side, the sponsum was broken in line with the beam. Again, um, where those mooring lines went through. So in Irma, what happened? So there's a, I mean, this is a glass fiber I-beam here, hugely strong. And Irma with a one inch dock lines just tore through the glass fiber beam itself. Both sides. And then she must have swiveled upside down, who knows what, and ended up over there by the mast rack, as I said, upside down. And then round two, went all the way over to where those orange floats are in that pedestal and was launched out the water upside down. So yeah, quite an adventure in Irma. All the way to the bow now. This area here has been strengthened up massively. Um, tomorrow, a new baby stay and uh, a new halyard are coming on here to complete the picture. And then this is a pro-furl 
um, race 430 furler. Um, very nice section. Um, black, sexy, yeah, we like that. Cost a bit, but Isaac at Wickham Ski Rigging did that for cost. And us, everyone's helped out, you know, it's not just Nanny Key, it's, um, it's everybody around Tortola has helped us out one way or another. Um, but it has been, yeah, a long five and a half years of, um, of rebuild.